the Missouri Valley Football Conference, I'm Brian Sullivan. It may have been a light week in the conference, but it's certainly an exciting one, as number 8 Western Illinois snapped a 15-game losing streak to the FBS as they defeated Northern Illinois 28-23 behind their quarterback Sean McGuire, who threw for 315 yards and a touchdown, and the defense came up big with two late stops. Missouri State, who was missing their starting quarterback, lost their first game of the season to Kansas State 35 to nothing as they played only a half in what has to be one of the craziest weather shortened games in FCS history. And finally, in their first conference game of the year, Indiana State upset number 18 Illinois State behind quarterback Isaac Harker's 237 yards and two touchdowns, running back Roland Genesee's 112 yards and two touchdowns, and Jonas Griffith's sack and forced fumble in the final moments of the game. Things don't get any easier for the Redbirds, as they now have to travel to Fargo, North Dakota to take on the number one FCS and the number 28 FBS ranked Bison. On paper, this looks like a game the Bison should win behind the play of starting quarterback Easton Stick, who has thrown for 575 yards and five touchdowns and a strong defense that kept Iowa's explosive offense in check. But these two have tied each other for the conference lead in each of the last two years, and this will be the first game the Bison defense plays without their heart and soul captain, Nick DeLuca, which could possibly open the door for Redbirds quarterback Jake Colby, who has 986 yards and six touchdowns this season to have a big game. Heading to Cedar Falls, where number 12 Northern Iowa takes on Southern Illinois. The 2-1 Salukis bring their high-powered offense, which is ranked 11th in the FCS, led by running back Daquan Isom, who is averaging 6.68 yards per carry, and quarterback Josh Strohn, who has 921 yards and 7 touchdowns this season. The 1-2 Panthers look to counter with their number 5 ranked defense, which has held opponents to an average of 67 rushing yards, anchored by Carter Schultz who is the school's all-time leader in career tackles for losses, and defensive back A.J. Allen, who had a career-high 12 tackles last game. And don't forget about second-year quarterback Aaron Bailey, who has just under 1,600 rushing yards and is tied for 10th in UNI history for rushing touchdowns of 22. Off to Youngstown State, where number 15 Penguin Nation hosts 1-2 South Dakota. The Penguins' defense, led by Derek Rivers, who has 28 sacks, is ranked first in points per game with only 18, but will have a tough test this week as they look to contain the Coyotes quarterback Chris Strebler, who is having an unbelievable year with 507 passing yards and 9 touchdowns and has rushed for 347 yards and 4 touchdowns, and wide receiver Shamar Jackson, who has 137 yards and 4 touchdowns. Penguins quarterback Ricky Davis with 376 yards and four touchdowns has more than proven that he can lead the offense. That includes weapons like Martin Ruiz, who has 302 yards and four touchdowns, and wide receiver Alvin Bailey, who has 129 yards and a touchdown. Let's go to Indiana State, where it'll be a battle of two of the more surprising teams in the conference, as 2-1 Missouri State takes on 3-1 number 24th ranked Sycamores. The Bears come in with one of the top defenses in the conference, led by linebacker Dylan Cole and defensive end Colby Isbell. They have given up a league low 271.3 yards per game. Missouri State is ranked second in pass defense with 182 yards per game and ranked third in run defense with 89.3 yards per game and even allowing 35 points last game, they still only average 19 points per game. The Sycamores will counter with their number two passing offense led by quarterback Isaac Harker, who has an astonishing 1,091 passing yards and 10 touchdowns, along with NFL-ready receiver Robert Tonyan Jr., who has already five touchdowns, and NVFC Newcomer of the Week Bob Pugh, who, has 100, who had excuse me, 196 all-purpose yards in their win last week. And finally, in the game of the week, Number 7 Western Illinois travels to number 15 South Dakota State. If you like offense, don't miss this game because it will pit two 3,000 yard receivers facing off against each other for the first time in conference history. Jack Rabbit's wide receiver Jake Winicky, who has 3,205 yards and is on pace to become the league's all-time receiver, is going up against Leathernecks wide receiver Lance Lenore, who reached 3,000 yards in their win last week. 
Leathernecks quarterback Sean McGuire has 760 yards and four touchdowns this season. We'll go against Jack Rabbit's quarterback Tyron Christian, who has already an amazing 809 yards and 10 touchdowns. And let's not forget about Western Illinois running back Stephen McShane, who leads the nation averaging 147.3 yards per game already this season. This game will come down to whoever can make a play on defense to stop one of the two prolific offenses. And that could be Western Illinois linebacker Brett Taylor, who has 13 tackles last week in the Leathernecks win. Kickoff starts at 6 p.m. Central Time on ESPN3. And finally, I'd like to hand out my Missouri Valley Football Conference Player of the Week awards. Starting with the Offensive Player of the Week, which goes to Western Illinois quarterback Sean McGuire after his impressive 315 yards and passing touchdown to go along with his rushing touchdown. On the defensive side, we're staying in Western Illinois as linebacker Brett Taylor recorded a game-high 13 tackles, 12 of which were solo tackles, and one which caused a fumble late in the game which sealed their win. And finally, Special Teams Player of the Week goes to Indiana State kicker Jerry Nunez, who went 2-for-2 two two in field goals in their upset win and is now perfect 6-for-6. Six six. If you still haven't joined the FCS revolution yet, go under hashtag FearTheFCS. the FCS.